is Average Joe PT, and on this episode, we're going to talk about piriformis syndrome. That butt pain that you're having, and you're not sure whether it's sciatica pain, or whether it's that muscle that crosses around that sciatica nerve. So I want to talk about treatment techniques, and how the heck do you tell the difference between sciatica and piriformis syndrome? So let's go ahead and get started right now. So when we look at this hip, so basically what we've done is we have the ball and socket on this side and we have your hip right here. And if we turn it to the back side a little bit, right here, this little notch is where your sciatic nerve comes through. This is called your sciatic notch. And yes, that sciatic nerve is that large. That's why when it does get inflamed or a pinch, it really does paralyze the leg a lot. It makes it numb and it's almost impossible to stand on your leg. Now that piriformis muscle itself actually runs, it can depend on the human anatomy. Now we're not all cookie cut. So some people their piriformis runs above the sciatic, sciatic nerve. Sometimes it runs below the sciatic nerve. And sometimes that piriformis bifurcates or splits into that sciatic nerve. Now, when we look at the actual back side of this, so we're gonna, gonna go ahead and, and do this for a second to kind of give you a good idea of you have your sacrum, your tailbone, and then your hip. And that muscle really runs on the underside of your orange or sacrum bone here, and then comes across and attaches. It's your main external or rotating muscle of your hip. So when you allow your hip to rotate out to the side, that muscle is really solely responsible for that movement. And what happens a lot of times is people will tend to want to stretch that muscle. They'll go ahead and cross their leg, pull their knee towards their opposite shoulder. They're doing everything they possibly can to stretch out that piriformis muscle in that hip. And the reality is, is if it's coming from the nerve, all you're doing is making it worse. Or if people are sitting and rolling on a ball or rolling on a foam, and if it's the nerve and not the muscle that's causing your problems, it's gonna make it a lot worse too. So how do you really tell the difference? Sometimes it can be difficult, but here are a few suggestions if you're having some symptoms and you're not really sure which is which. If you're having numbness or tingling or burning down your leg, more than likely it's the sciatic nerve not piriformis syndrome. If you're having weakness in the leg and it feels like you can't bring your knee up towards your chest or the leg itself, you can't really stand on it, it's the sciatic nerve and it's not piriformis syndrome. So you're gonna wanna stay away from stretching it. I'm gonna leave a tag up there, all types of sciatic type treatments you can do. It's in my back uh, catalog. You can go ahead and look at that afterwards. But specifically the piriformis muscle, if you're just having some throbby, achy pain in the butt area and it isn't traveling anywhere, if it doesn't feel like it's crossing into the front of the body, then it probably is just your piriformis muscle or one of the other small external tear muscles within your hip. One of them being the Gemelli brothers that we used to talk about in school. So it isn't just that one muscle, but that's the main one that does get inflamed. And what you want to do with that first is ice it if it's giving you a lot of sharp pain. You want to stay away from sitting on that side as much as possible as well as sitting at all if you can help it. You'd want to lie on the opposite side. That'll help your symptoms. Icing it, like I said, 15 to 20 minutes. Give you that nice 72 hour window with some anti-inflammatories and then start to do some gentle piriformis stretching to that. So just Take a nice little review. If it's burning numbness and it feels like you can't really put your leg down, put weight through it, it's probably sciatica pain, not piriformis. If it's not doing any of those types of symptoms, it's the piriformis and you can do some gentle stretching to that particular muscle group. Don't be over aggressive with it. Just go to the point where you feel the pull, hold for about 30 seconds to up to a minute. Do that once or twice and really do that three or four times a day. You can easily overstretch that muscle because you know when you're pulling it, it feels really good and you have a tendency to want to keep doing that and you can also inflame that muscle and tendon attachment also. So you really only want to do that three times a day. If you guys have any questions at all, go ahead and leave some comments down below. 
We try and bring content a couple times a week, myself and Scully. And uh, until next time, we always like to say, look up and keep smiling. See you next time, folks.